It's time for Type 40, your Doctor Who podcast from the Spacebook for the Fandom Podcast Network with me, Dan Hadley, Birmingham's King of the Geeks and your designated driver. If this is your first trip of a lifetime with us or you've been aboard before, you'll be happy to hear we're the same freewheeling, non-gatekeeping, quite eclectic show for everybody. Whatever decade or century you started watching, reading or listening along to the ongoing adventures of our hero, Doctor Who. We talk about it all on this show and all views are encouraged. There could even be a, a few laughs along the way. Time will tell. <laughs> so <st> come and step into our TARDIS and share this journey together here with us on Type 40. Yes, welcome aboard one and all, whether you've been uh, pinged yet or not we're here we're here for you for our latest conversation surrounding the universe of all things who and this is one we've been planning for quite some time isn't it simon horton hello are we are we still in <laughs> lockdown are we are we are we are we a green list country are we social distancing i don't know i don't know anymore hands, hands, hands face space get away from me <laughs> Ah, yes, have you washed your hands before joining us on the, I have, on the, fully, on the show? Fully, back, fully bacteriated. Um, I've had a full, a full body scrub. You name it, I'm I'm as clean as a whistle. I'm double jabbed. It's all good. It's all good. But I'm still in Marvel. lockdown. Why am I still in lockdown? I don't know what's happening. Lockdown has sort of started again for us for the next hour and a half ish here on Type Forty. I mean, you're you're the original. Hunatic, aren't you, Simon? But as you, as, you can so. gather, as you can gather out there, this fan base, this community that we are part of, based around this silly old TV series, is blessed with lots of true originals, isn't it? Originals and eccentrics. I'm going to leave you to decide which of our two guests on this edition of the show is which when we bring them on in a, in a moment. But yeah, it's been a really funny 18 months, as hasn't it? And all joking apart, a lot of us haven't really known whether we are we're coming or going or even been, as the as the saying goes. <laughs> but how, how have you been? How are you finding things now? All the restrictions have have been dropped. Well, you know, it's it's certainly been the oddest 18 months that I think any of us can remember. Um, and and yeah, I'm still I'm still sort of just making tentative steps out there. I have to be honest, I'm still kind of in a little bit of my own self-imposed lockdown because, you know, I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm just kind of waiting for it all to sort of explode again. And I'm just kind of, you know, I'm, I'm being very, very tentative and very, very careful. Freedom Day wasn't really Freedom Day for me. I'm still I'm quite happy in my four walls and you can all just push off. <laughs> we take your journey with you. But here's your warning. Simon Horton, the original Hunatic, is back out there in the community. And I am. Uh, there's all sorts of things going on. Of course, the Doctor Who universe and, and fan base is being as creative as ever. And as things open up, conventions and signings, all manner of events, Who fans are taking to the, to the motorways and the A-roads to go wherever they need to go to get their fix, whether they're location hunting, catching up with old friends, or basically stalking. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> yeah, I think that brings us to the first of our guests. It's a fast return this time for our friend from Northumberland, the, uh, the Sontaran spotter and star of Radio Proper. Over yeah. the last couple of weeks, so I, don't stuff, you, BBC. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, yeah, all the way from his his very own museum. It's got to be the mighty Neil Cole, isn't it? Hey, Neil, you okay? Feeling mighty. You mighty are mighty in my man. I'm feeling mighty in my man cave. Yes, I'm <laughs> yeah. very well. Thank you once again for putting me on to drabble on for a while about all <laughs> who things. And uh, the good news is for anybody watching this is that my hair is growing in a bit. It was a bit of a shocking egg for a while, but it's getting mm. there now. It's back. It's getting back in. Although I've got a nice big halo light, which yeah. is just, you know, it's great. looking yeah. good. It's looking good. Well, what, you're, when we... merging, you're, you're merging with the back of the wall there a little bit. We've just got kind of a head floating. Your top's the same colour as the walls. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, 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 could, I could put a light on. Look. That's a bit weird, isn't it? That's, a bit, scary. That. Yeah. That's so a bit just, scary. Just to refresh your memory. <laughs> I, know, <laughs> Neil, I know you've yeah. had a hard week. The last time you were on the show, <laughs> you were yeah. here to talk about your entire journey with Doctor Who from from uh, from childhood right the way through to where you are now in the Museum of yeah. Classic Sci-Fi. So we, we went through all of that. We had a brilliant time. And yes, you had not long 
had your, your famous locks cut, hadn't you? After years and years of having hair down to your waist or whatever, yeah. whatever it was, hair you could sit on. Well, I thought it was amazing on that Radio 6 programme that somebody dug up that I used to play in a Rush cover band. That was in, I thought, wow, I thought that, that was a bit weird. But yeah, that, that was where that, 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 that really important milestone haircut that matters Whoa. to everybody massively, I'm sure, went, yeah, last year. And, and it's, I'm recovering now. You know, so I'm still recovering. I don't know what else before. to say about my hair. I, I don't really know what to say about my hair. I'm sorry I brought it up, really. I'm sure well, everybody listening to this is really, really enjoying hearing about my mop. Neil, I'm stung into silence, really, because I'm just shocked that the BBC do their research. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, moving on yeah. slightly, this time you brought somebody special with you. You're used to hanging around with venerable legends of, of the do, world do of Doctor what? Who, aren't you? But this time you've, you've got some, somebody who actually moves, walks and talks themselves. Uh, what, what? I brought somebody along. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Are we talking about our next guest? We are indeed. It's a it's a man who who's a uh, prolific, enterprising, and creative force within is, the Doctor Who fan base. This, 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 yeah, I worked. Uh, well, I say worked. Sorry, I was sort of do I was dog's body really. Um, to Keith, and it was a lovely, lovely weekend. It was absolutely fab. I'm not just saying uh, it was absolutely a fabulous weekend, which I will not forget in a hurry. And um, it, was, it was it was brilliant. Well, I think that you know you, you've you've said it there. The name, Keith, probably says it all. This guy has been synonymous with Doctor Who in his own way, stretching back mm -hmm. for yeah. maybe longer decades. I don't, don't know if you'll thank me for reminding can, me about can, his... Can I, yes. Can I add one thing? I yes. was just going to say, when I first contacted Keith... He's always Sophie like this, everybody. Yeah, yeah. When Sophie um, was coming up, and yes. it, I said to Keith, I am as excited about meeting you, Keith, as I was about Sophie. Do you know, because that to me, Keith is a legend in Doctor Who. Simple as that. And I'll he show very it much is. And his, he, uh, well, yeah, I would imagine that, uh, yeah, he's straight to the top of the Christmas card list for that one. But his, yeah, his output continues to engage us as, as punters and fellow fans and those who uh, dish out awards for independent productions too. He seems to be picking up awards on a weekly basis. So here to talk about, uh, about one such film, which is about to be released at the time of recording. I'm I'm proper chuffed to welcome Keith Barnfather of Real Time Pictures to Type 40. <laughs> well, there's a lead in. Go on. <laughs> go, on go. go on. Go on. No. Keith. No, we don't scrimp on the lead ins here, mate. No, it lasted long enough, didn't it? God. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome aboard, Keith. Yeah, so I'm Birmingham's King of the Geeks, kind of semi officially, but Real Time, Pic Real -time Pictures used to be based in Birmingham, didn't it? For a while, yeah. Um, that's a that's a sort of more a personal story than a company story. Uh, there was a time when uh, I was at the end of a relationship and I wanted to just get away. And my brother had moved to Birmingham and, and we were sort of chatting away. And I came up to Birmingham for about three years, which was great because I had mates like Steve Broster and um, Paul Venesis who lived in the area. So it was good to spend a bit of time up there with them. Um, yeah, I have very happy memories of it. And it, of course, it was the time when the centre of Birmingham was really changing with all the redevelopment. Um, and I, yeah, I have, I have very fond memories. I'll, I'll be honest and say I was happy to get back to the smoke. But, uh, you know, I, I do have very good memories. And now I can't seem to keep track of where wherever you are or whatever you're doing. You've always got some, well, several proje projects in various stages of development. We're going to talk about one at great length today on the show. <laughs> And before we get into chewing all the way through that, it's uh, time to remind them, all the people out there listening and watching, that uh, if you'd like to do some real time travelling of your own, each and every edition of this show, past, present and future, is just a tap or two away on the device of your choice if you know where to look. And there'll be some more about that a little later on, as well as a cut across to the, the matrix of all knowledge, that we call the Fandom Podcast Network for a word about all the other cult conversations going on on all the other marvellous shows over there. Okay, now that's that taken care of. Let's get back. <laughs> More lockdown talk, Simon. Let's get back into our bubble just for a little while now to talk all things lockdown who. Okay. 
Okay, yes. So 2020 is a year that none of us are likely to forget, everybody. Uh, together, the real world faced a global health crisis that we're still we're still dealing with, as Simon, Simon was saying, dealing with individually in our own way across all aspects of our day-to-day -day personal and, and working life, nearly a year and a half on. Uh, phrases like social distancing and, and Zoom calls have entered popular usage. Uh, we, I think we all have a, a refreshed respect for the supply of such things as toilet roll. And uh, of course, we, we did get used to seeing seas of masks, didn't we, across uh, British streets and in supermarkets and things, which is uh, a strange atomizing feeling somehow. But hopefully those those days are all gone. Lockdown measures, measures came into force after a few weeks of rumours in the UK on the 26th of March 2020 with the instruction to simply stay home and, and save lives while the, the world outside our windows became unbelievably still and quiet and workplaces and schools all closed down and households, we all locked down together. We weren't really sure for how long were we, but Doctor Who fans being Doctor Who fans, being resourceful, optimistic and a creative breed that I think once the shock had subsided, kind of rallied together through social media and through platforms such as YouTube and, and through podcasting and all those other sort of creative endeavours to, to bond with one another, to reach out to one another and just simply to help pass the time as uh, reassuringly as was possible, be that through the, the tweet alongs that were going on over Twitter where, the, where fans would sort of get together and watch an agreed episode on a certain night of the week and actors and writers all got involved as well, didn't they, at, at certain intervals. Or that creating audio dramas, animations, any creative process you can, you can possibly name. But watching all of this happen, Keith, as somebody who's been in the Doctor Who fan base for so, so long, did that, did that turn on a light bulb, the light bulb of your creativity too? Well, it didn't intentionally. I mean, we, we were quite lucky that because we tend to plan ahead i mean as you say mm. real time's getting on for 40 years old uh 1984 so it'd be two years time Moy, we've got to have a party guys got to have a party um really? and i thought that we were so ahead of schedule we had stuff in the can that we needed to edit so there wasn't a problem we had about um three or four of the doctor's dvds ready to go and yeah. we had some myth makers i needed to catch up on so i was a bit sort of engrossed in all of that and then um, I remember seeing um, I remember seeing a photograph. In fact, it, it is the photograph that we used on the front of the DVD in the end. And I can't remember the name of the, the fan that took the photograph. And I forgive me if you ever watch this, um, although I've credited him on the uh, inlay. But I was looking at it um, and I thought, that's brilliant doing something like that. You know, it's really clever doing that during lockdown, you know, sort of doing things to to pass the time and exactly everything you've just said to you know to network and and keep your in, your interest going as a sort of a valve for being locked away um i mean we were actually my wife and my son and i were all in cyprus so it was a bit easier there but even so you still felt you know we had a lockdown there but not quite as uh, strong as it was in britain um and and the penny just sort of went oh yeah you know that well how did you do now what are other people doing oh now that would be interesting to find out but hang on we can't because nobody can do anything i can't go and film and then it just cascaded into now look doctor who fans nowadays are so inventive they're all making their own films anyway now they're, you know you're seeing stuff on on yes you say on youtube you're seeing stuff done um on uh, mobile phones and things these days people are more educated in how to film so I thought, wouldn't it be brilliant as something for people to do? And I don't mean that to be arrogant. I mean, just to get everybody together and say, hey, why don't you do some? Have a focus, have something to work towards, you know, rather than doing it for yourself, do it for for a bigger uh, picture for all of us and show us what you can do. And that was really the genesis of it. It was just to do something together as a group of all of us fans together. And that's that was the inspiration. And that's what I put out on social media and had such an amazing response. And this it's interesting, the... isn't it? Because that, that, that attitude that you're talking about there, Keith, that was very much the attitude of the country back in the early days of the lockdown. You know, it was all this idea of we're all in it together. I think it's, it, you know, that has definitely waned over time. But mm. back when you first started to come up with that, the, this, this idea, 
everybody really was mucking in together and we were all you know at that point we were probably all still going out and clapping uh, every thursday night for the nhs and so it was very much a community a, a kind of a war spirit we've heard a lot of bringing people together and you kind of tapped into that didn't you and, and sort of ran with it but did you did you have kind of, kind of any idea in your brain what kind of thing people would be up to out there because when you i know when you first announced it i thought well what are people going to be doing they're going to be reading old target books they're going to be maybe doing the paint by numbers you know i don't know what they're going to be doing in lockdown did you have any thoughts as to what to expect no no i mean that's the joy of um i mean that that it's not often as a producer you can you can throw a coin in the air and just see how it lands I mean, what does it matter in a way? I mean, if everything that had arrived was utter bilge water, I was going to use another word, but you never know who's watching, <laughs> um, and was dire and terrible, would it matter because that people enjoyed doing it when they did it? Precisely. Right? Yeah. But if it turned up some gems and, and we got some material that we thought was good enough to, to um, that other people would enjoy seeing, then we could then make a program. I, I In other words, I couldn't lose. It, you know, I mean, I'm saying that, it's that, you know, it sounds terrible to say it that way in a way, but it's true. It's not like me saying, here's 10 grand, everybody. Let's see what comes back. Not that I could ever have done that anyway. <laughs> but... You see my point this way i know everybody's not spending money doing it they would have been doing it probably anyway or they'd be using the props and the, the things they've already got in their collections yeah. it was just a, a a punt in the dark and see what so for the people out there who may have this may have slipped through the net for them keith what describe the project what was your initial pitch for it and what did you ask of the people out there I just sent out on social media a plea and said, hey, guys, what are you doing? You know, uh, what, what have you been doing during lockdown? What What is it that you've done? Send me in, shoot a video. It doesn't matter whether you do it on a professional camera. It doesn't matter whether you do it on a mobile phone, your laptop. Just and if you just want to talk at your laptop and send me a message, that's fine. If you want to make a film, that's fine. Whatever works for you but it needs to be short because obviously we're going to try and get as many people's contributions in as possible and the response was utterly amazing i mean um in the end we had something like 60 or 70 contributions now given that you're talking about people who've had to go out and shoot stuff and and it's also the variety of material we got we got um um somebody who um made a a musical instrument and played it we had somebody uh, people who had filmed their collections in buildings that they had built to look like the tardis um we had people who were doing cosplay we had people reading we as you say we had people we we had one uh, father and son doing a doc two version of gogglebox which absolutely <laughs> is hysterical um we it, it I mean, the thing for me was, is I'd got all the material in, um, but um, I had a bit of a personal tragedy in my life. Um, my wife and I lost her best friend to uh, pancreatic cancer at the beginning of this year. Um, and she was with us right to the end. And it was a really difficult time. And I still haven't really quite recovered from it. So I just couldn't put the production, the editing into it. I mean, you guys know, and I'm, I'm sure everybody out there knows, whatever your passion is in life if you're not there you can't do it um and 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 editing and being creative hopefully with editing um is something you you it has to come from you and if you're not there for whatever reason you can't do it so i i asked my one of my best and oldest friends roger stevens who i've known for as ever um, would he take on the editing for me and, and in essence take over the directing because he was going to write all the script and cut all the bits together um, and I passed the project to him to edit and that really was the best decision I could make um, I mean I'm slowly becoming getting back into it but but moving it to him after we'd shot all the stuff with Neil um, and Neil was brilliant because I told Neil what I'd been through and he was very supportive while we were filming well, that's. I think it's time to bring in Neil now because, yeah. Oh, all, no, no, no. All... <laughs> I'm off. Cheers. <laughs> obviously, yeah, obviously, Neil, you know, you, you have been on the show a couple of times before, but pe for people out there who are wondering and haven't heard, explain where you came into this story. 
uh, I was very, I think, I, mean, I wouldn't say where we are is absolutely remote. People have this idea that Allendale is in the, it, it is, it's, it's a little way out, but it, it's kind of nestled between um, the Lake District and the Roman Wall, and people tend to overshoot it. But it's it's not far from Hexham, and it's not that far from Newcastle and Carlisle. It's kind of in the middle, but people it does get this reputation. It's classed as a rural deprived area, uh, technically, but it's also an area of outstanding natural beauty, and it's a world heritage site. So I've, of course, I of course the obvious thing to do is to create a Doctor Who museum in such a place. <laughs> um, but obviously, it, I, I tried to make the museum as I bored you all before with is is trying to replicate that experience I had as a young in, in the Blackpool 1970s exhibition. That was always what I was going for. And Keith very kindly had spotted, uh, obviously, what it looked like and deemed it to be a good location for th the linking material, which for me was just bloody amazing because it's going to get, obviously, it, it, it's it's hitting the people who I would like, who I'm sure would want to know about the museum. I mean, as you know, I was in Doctor Who magazine finally, which was really great. And uh, But that that's the sort of, coverage I just needed because otherwise you know you'd get some average walker wandering past and the wife goes oh I like Daleks you know what's that you know and it is it, you can't depend on that and I needed to get that you know yeah that word out so so Keith had seen the the, the museum I mean my only concern at the start was that it really is tight in space just and the lights are so low and there's so oh, much wow. ruddy glass everybody who visits the museum it's like oh the glass and the problem is that I just cannot it, it, you know, people will not stop fiddling with things, and they're so fragile <laughs> that I have to have the glass. But I was prepared to take some of the glass out, but it's a beast of a job. Um, so, so what, you know, what did what did Keith reach out to you and ask you for then, as the curator of the music, Museum of Classic Sci-Fi? My soul, utterly, just my soul, everything <laughs> I had. Well, the legends are true, are they? Yeah, yeah, they're absolutely true. No, so it was just the, it was really a place, a, 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 a suitable linking. A place to, to, to as a backdrop. I mean, I remember the old um, Tom Baker Sharder VHS where he was in the uh, where was he? He was in Mommy or something. The Museum it? of so the Moving Image. That yeah. Was, yeah, and he was and, and it was that sort of effect, isn't it? Really? You've just got some appropriate props, um, and thankfully, I've just got to this point where I've actually got in. I do feel it's quite a good little museum now, whereas I've, it's taken a while to, to shape it into something. I feel I feel confident when people come in. Yes, there is plenty for a fan to see. Um, my, as I said, my only concern was how the hell are you going to shoot it? Because I always say with my, my museum is there's as many muse there's as many exhibits in it, which, but you just don't have very far to walk. Do you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it, it's so tight, you know. And that was my only concern. But I was thrilled because I mean, when the, the video goes out, I mean the D the Blu-ray sorry goes out, it, it, it you know it's DVD DVD is it DVD DVD it's yeah Blu-ray is it DVD. You're not That's doing the Blu-ray. Hang on, who's, who's selling this? <laughs> <laughs> Have I missed okay. something? <laughs> so, so Neil Keith's knows everything. We all know that by now. <laughs> What's so that? Keith, Keith's concept. Hey, do you know what? what? Do you know what? Do you know what? Hey, I'm being diagnosed for ADHD, Keith. Seriously, at the minute. <laughs> Oh, I'm surprised. That was the day I met you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I really am. I really am. Yeah. Anyway, right. I'll show. Up. So Keith's concept should... was that you, all the linking material for this release, all those wonderful clips that he's just described to us, that we can't wait to see, that it was going to be linked together, just like those old old tapes from the BBC, linked yes, together. Yes, that With <laughs> we love all those old <laughs> tapes. <laughs> I should. So, I should. I should cut in and just yeah. say before you carry on. <laughs> what in any and time? Say, you know the story better than I do, my friend. Well, no, I was just going to say the logic behind it was, yeah. uh, and I know Neil knows that I say this with love and affection, is what I was looking for was the ultimate fan's home. And the ultimate fan's home is the fan who's ah. built a museum in the yeah. basement. And in fact, yeah, we, say that, we say that in Sophie's Linking in when she introduces it. Because yeah. I can't believe there's a, you know, there are there are fans who've built shrines, there are fans who've built TARDIS <laughs> console rooms, but there has never been a fan who has turned their basement <laughs> into a museum. There you go. Yeah, and, and there you thank have you. it. So uh, you opened you, up think. your thank home. You. <laughs> you opened yeah. up your home. Well, you've already housed several refugees from 
from Doctor Who past, but you actually opened up your home to uh, to Keith and another Doctor Who legend here, Sophie Aldred, who played Ace for us back in the 1980s, yeah. has been remained part of the fandom and is now a, a writer acting in various other things too. You know, she's just always been there. So Keith, Sophie, all that equipment in your home, around all that glass and all those ex exhibits, it must have it must have been other out a sort of otherworldly experience for you too, Keith. I, I was getting worried when you said Sophie and all that other equipment in the same line. And I was wondering where this conversation was going. <laughs> Sorry, um, Sophie, you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, well, I hope I do. Um, well, I mean, it, I, Sophie was the, was for me, I mean, we are, ve we are close friends, you know, separate to everything to do with Doctor Who and her being, having played A, she's a really good friend. Um, and if, there's anybody you want to host something which is about fans sophie was the obvious choice because she she is such she has such respect and such love for fans there's no them and us with sophie you know she treats always, everybody. that always comes across to, to us uh, yeah. and, it, and it is it's totally real with sophie sophie doesn't go home and say oh god i'm glad i've got that out of the way you know but at least we've got the 500 pounds in the bank account kind of attitude she's the absolute opposite she does it because she loves it um, and because she cares about people. So, you know, it for me, and she really wanted to do it because of what the subject matter was. So I said that she was the obvious choice to do the links, and she was on board before Roger got involved in the editing, but he was over the moon as well because he knows Sophie. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm. I, it's never been a problem for me working within whatever environment I am given to work within. I mean, I hadn't seen the museum, but Neil had warned is the wrong word. He had prepared me for the fact that we would be, um, you know, we would be working in confined spaces. Um, what I couldn't do with this one, which I would normally do, and you can see from these photographs, is I couldn't light it properly. I couldn't, you know, bring in, um, I mean, I could have put clip lights up in places, but it just would have spent, would have spent forever doing it. It wouldn't have made that much difference um, because of the confined space, because of all the reflections. So I just, I, for the immediacy of the filming and for the, the look of it being like the productions that the fans had sent in, I plumped just banging a pag light on the camera and shooting it all handheld inside. Um, and obviously, I know none of you have seen the material yet. And he, Neil hasn't seen any of it yet. But no. I'm over the moon about the quality of what it what it looks like and and the way that Sophie moves the narrative along. Um, you know, the museum is tremendous. I'd recommend anybody to go and see it. It definitely has that. I mean, I was one of the, you know, obviously one of the fans who used to go up to the original Blackpool exhibition quite regularly when it first opened. Um, and and Neil's museum does give that wonderful feeling of being back at Blackpool. Um, you. you know, well, it's, 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 it's a treasure. And and also, I mean, interestingly, you, you're right with the lighting because had you had you overlit everything, it would have lost that that feel anyway. Because that's the whole thing about those old Blackpool and Longleat exhibitions; they are dimly lit. They're very yeah. they're, they're, they're they're very brightly the bright colours, but there's very little light within them. So it would have ruined it if you just sort of flat lit it. But also, I'm right, aren't I? And I think you planned to use tripods within. The, the, the filming and then you, you did you abandon that sort of on the hoof as it were that you the use of tripods once you got there and you saw the space um no i would say i mean my my going there i was i was aware of the situation but what you always do is you bring everything with you you know yeah. you bring all the kinds of lighting and I, I don't know how neil would say it but i think he i think i virtually walked in the door neil didn't i and just basically went right we'll shoot this handheld with a pack line <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know, after all the years, you know, I, yeah. Go on. Sorry. The no, the no, the interesting thing was I'd had a few film crews over, just just from the press, so professional film crews had come in, and I'll be honest, they'd made a right old song and dance about it, and it, and if you watch the obviously the, the high budget one was Netflix in 2017, and we literally had uh, in the same space, you know, what we we had tr running tracks coming out the door off the things, it was insane, and I'm. Um, I'd be interested to see, I mean, I'd just be very interested to see what you do because I suspect it's going to look great. And you worked incredibly efficiently. Compared, Netflix, we were getting about, I don't know, 30 seconds a day sometimes. It was insane, you know, maybe two or three shots. Um, 
and we were and I just was really impressed at how obviously you and Sophie worked incredibly well. I just really just tried to keep out of the way and take a few shots, but it was just so slick and and I and I think as well you have kept the lights down and there's a book came out last year by Bedwyr Gulich, um, the exhibitions book, which is an excellent read if you if you're into this. And I remember just reading how they that when they did turn the lights up, and I can absolutely tell you this because I've got Stratford John's feet from uh, Fort of Doomsday at the minute, and in white light. Right, yes, the slippers, m &S slippers, which have stuck bandage and latex on, they're absolutely rubbish, but they're wonderful <laughs> rubbish, if you know what I mean. Anyway, once you turn the lights up on some of these costumes, they look pants. Really oh, yeah. there's, there's one or two great bits of work, but the Gundan's a good one. The Gundan I just put in recently. It, it's tatty back plastic with staples in. You turn the lights down, it gets that gun metal and everything. And it just yeah. would not work, you know, sort of English heritage style, you know, like it just wouldn't work. Yeah. So, but but it's also it is part of the atmosphere as well as we say those old Longley mm -hmm. and Blackpool exhibitions. And, and interestingly, I mean, how, do you know how much material you you have actually shot with with Sophie? How much of the DVD running time is Sophie? Do you know how much screen time you actually shot at, uh, at Neil's museum? Um, I would guess. I mean, obviously, you, you you tend to do one or two takes just in case. Um, yeah. and as always, you do one and you think, oh, that's not quite right. Um, I, I would guess out of the 46 minutes of the production, uh, six, seven minutes, maybe eight, maybe, but probably about six or seven with Sophie. Probably less um, because I haven't timed it. <laughs> but these um, are links that are scattered throughout that link the various bits, are they? As opposed to just bookending, two bookends kind of thing. Yeah, it, it's it's the obviously it's the opener and the closing and, and before the titles and you know numerous links within it to to move it through. Yeah. And, and were you were also? You... I mean, I I, I can imagine. Sorry, Dad, I can imagine when I first went up to Neil's museum uh, opening weekend. I was delighted to be there when it opened, and I remember just it, it, it's like kid in a candy store. You know, you walk in <laughs> and you literally don't know where to look because this. It, trust me, for anybody that hasn't been to Neil's museum. It is this cornucopia. It's it's an Aladdin's cave of Doctor Who treasures. So Keith, as a director, did you kind of walk in and almost think, "Wow, everywhere, wherever I point my camera, I've got a different uh, backdrop with a different iconic costume or prop in." So I, so you know, were you almost spoiled for choices to where to go, or were you more restrained by the space of it, and so you had no choice? I think Neil knows my answer to that. Neil, I mean, essentially, I was thinking, how am I going to get 20 links in 12 feet of space? I mean, because, <laughs> you know, you walk yeah, yeah. around. Uh, uh, Neil, what would you yeah. reckon the actual leg space of the Doctor Who oh. walk? It's not much, is it? It's... Of actual yeah, length? I would say yeah. About yeah. yeah, we're just yeah. in a criticism. But no, obviously, I'm it's... thinking, how yeah. am I going to? But you you said it absolutely right, Simon. The point is, anywhere you look, yeah. there's something else. I mean, yeah. that's the wonderful thing about it. Um, to anybody who goes to the museum, although it is a very small area, there is a day of viewing in it. Oh, because, yeah. You know, you go and you say, oh, there's, yeah. oh, yeah. And, and you, oh, no, no, no. And there's 10 minutes gone just looking at that one place. And then you go around the corner yeah. and then you turn around and you realize you've just missed that. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, for me, it was, it was, I, I mean, the, the simplest way to film it. And there's one thing I've learned over the years as my, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm, I'm good at um, is, I just don't faff around if something needs to be done because it has to be done and there's no point there's no you know you're not you're not luxury i've never had the luxury of budgets where i could fart around for a day and a half doing one shot um i probably wouldn't know what to do if i ever had that um you know it was but, so good it was so good the way you work around having i have seen people faffing here with lighting rigs and you know they look like they're off the sort of queen tour from 19 you know 84 or whatever and yeah. it you know, and honestly, when you see what they get back, it's good. But I, I have got full confidence. I suspect what you're going to get to, you know, I'll be you're very, very happy with it. And, I, and you are so slick. It was brilliant because I, I was sort of resigned. I thought, right, how long is this going to be? You part, you know, it's going to take a while. But no, you are really like a oh, well-oiled yeah. machine, Keith. Well-oiled well, machine. I wanted to get down the pub, mate. <laughs> yeah, me too. 
Yeah, so what, what I was wondering, BBC, you know, I mean, you know, I miss the days of the BBC bar at television. <laughs> what I was wondering was, in light of the fact that when you've spoken about the museum before, Neil, bringing it mm. into a reality, you've talked at length about such things as music and and lighting. You know, you, you've got this sort of attention to detail in everything that you do. And so, yeah, when, when Keith brings equipment and extra human beings into that environment, I did you know, wonder the, the economy, the efficiency of shooting something like this within that space. How long were they there with you for, Neil? Oh, it was, it was probably, in, in terms of shooting, it was probably an afternoon and a morning, wasn't it, Keith? It was yeah, we did, uh, we did all the exterior, because, um, uh, to cut a long story short, yeah. and Sophie was supposed to be coming up on um, uh, Friday, uh, and we were going to film on Saturday. Um, but uh, the trains were all cancelled on the route uh, up to um, uh, Carlisle from, I think Carlisle, from uh, where she lives. Um, and she couldn't come up. And she booked a train and managed to get a, um, a train the next morning at Saturday morning. So Neil was an absolute diamond. This is where you really appreciate people when you work with them because he, he flipped everything around and said, look, we can shoot on Sunday morning as well. So w initially we were planning on filming all of the interiors on Saturday afternoon and then doing the exteriors on Sunday morning. But the weather forecast for Sunday was not, was it, Neil? It was saying that yeah, the weather was, would be worse. Yeah. So yeah. We, we we did all of the exteriors on Saturday, got all of the links. Because mm -hmm. what we do is we have the intro and the outro and a couple of other bits outside. And then the beat, the meat of it about, you know, all of the contributions is shot inside. Yeah. Um, so we did all the exteriors on Friday, had a uh, Saturday, had a wonderful evening meal with your family, Neil, uh, on yeah, exactly uh, that. Yeah, really nice, really, really, really lovely. Nice Got yeah, two yeah. wonderful children and a, and a wonderful <laughs> wife, too, I should add. Um, and um, we, did all the in <laughs> we did all the interior stuff on um, uh, on Sunday morning. Um, so I suppose we were actually shooting in the museum, inside the museum, for about four hours. And yeah, am, I right, am I right in remembering, I think this was October, wasn't it, just before we went into the next lockdown? Am I right in remembering this time scale on this right. now uh yeah. that doesn't feel right to me is that right neil i can't what was that when, when you shot it i see i seem to have it in my brain that it was maybe october november no, time it wasn't october was it no it was, I, I you know i can't remember i'd have to go and get my this was it was it this year then oh my god do you know i can't blink and remember when it was it feels no, that's not our live that's the neil yeah. show <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> it's all right. It's quite all right. Yeah, I've got, I've got this feeling we did it this year in April. That was so. this year. Oh, was it? Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I thought right. it, it was this year. Well, 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 we're letting them tell us when we did it. <laughs> it was. It was this year. It was this year. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it was so I know. I know where I'm over I the road from Neil's museum, October, everybody. Because, because originally, wasn't October going to be your reopening? Oh, yeah, that's thing. when you were originally going to open. Yes, it. that's the original. Yeah, that's opened, where I did, got October from. Yeah, we did open for a week, and then we locked, had to lock down again. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I pulled out. It. I said I can't take the chance. You know, that's right. Just, no, that's no, no. And to be honest, it's the right thing. It's absolutely the right thing to do. That's so basically, so basically, all the all this was filmed in in April after we'd begun to come out of lockdown. Yeah. I, again, I've yes. lost track of the. Yes. I, that's right. Hang on. I was. I kept. I know exactly now. I kept it shut a week, long extra to make sure no one was hanging around, so that we could just get on. Because I knew time was so tight. I thought we just cannot have people you know pop dropping in which is with all the kindness they will that you know they, they want to so you, that was when i just said door shut and i didn't put anything out about it just shut and we're opening the weekend after that that's how it works uh, we, we couldn't have even got a sound engineer into those corridors i tell you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, did you did you have so well, you know the thing was that the sofa was using a hand mic a hand mic yeah. yeah do you know what it, what had happened right was two things sorry i'll, I'll this as quick as i can mice got in right uh, around october time or just before mice got in and made a nest in the graph vindicate's costume right <laughs> i joke you, i joke you not i'm There's not a joking. hitchhiker's <laughs> joke there somewhere <laughs> and, what. and and then the, I, I was finding beads on the floor right and it was the beads yeah, of man. the 
Not that sort of ruddy beads. It was beads oh, off the. It was beads off the Gallifreyan outsider <laughs> Shaboggan costume, and I, I was like, "I'm going to swear." Don't I thought, laugh. Don't laugh. Oh laugh. Yeah. Sorry. No. I'm sorry. Bleep that out. Sorry. But I was just like, I honestly was like, "Shit, we've got mice. We've got mice infestation." So, and I did put that. I think in the lockdown video, I did mention it. And honestly, I, I then had to just build a new cabinet that was freestanding, and that meant the corridor suddenly shrank. It's made it a better display. And then Mike Tucker calls about out the blue, wonderful, and just says, would you like to borrow Broat on for a, few, a year or two? And and so suddenly like, that, that meant <laughs> to destroy another corridor. That, as you literally, do. I mean, yeah. Literally yeah just that's not an offer down. you can't refuse. I don't know what is. <laughs> and then that shortened it again. So it literally, I mean, it means that we can't, it's very difficult to get sort of wheelchair access in now, unfortunately. Um, and unfortunately, the council being so, so willing to help. Uh, means they won't help us with any sort of sort of plan, you know. Well, they love you I'm in the council, even... don't they, Neil? They love oh, they, you. They're my best friends. They're going to love um, it when the TARDIS turns up. I'll tell you. It's there. It, I'm building it now. <laughs> oh, it'll be here for. It'll be here for. So it'll be here for if you're coming back. It'll be here. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, that's it. Yeah. Sorry, that was my tuppence. Obviously, so it just made, it restricted it even more. It was just less space again. So, well, I was about to say. I mean, you're a you're a fiercely creative man, Neil. So you must have found. I think it's called ADHD. That... I think I found out the answer. <laughs> it's ADHD. <laughs> the cha the of challenges that Keith time. brought with this production. <laughs> Did you find all of this very stimulating? And could you get involved? And how receptive were they to to your ideas as somebody who does know that space intimately? Every every single panel. Just told me to sod off every time I open my mouth and shut up. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Quite that right, too, Keith. Quite <laughs> right. No, I just, <laughs> honestly, look, I am not a filmmaker. At the end of the day, yes, yes I've made this obsessive project, I guess, and, it, and it, with a lot of love, and I wanted it to be a proper history museum about Doctor Who. Because in the exhibitions, often they just have, like, there's a Jadoon, there's a sign with Jadoon, and there's a picture of a Jadoon. So in case you haven't learned it, there's a Jadoon. But there's nothing about the makers. There's nothing about the history of the object or anything. I wanted to make it. A really serious museum but that's where my involvement ended really it was then up to you know keith skill to and i just kept away i just wanted to i just was desperate to get you some decent background footage which is what keith wanted me to do and that was i just tried desperately and it was quite tricky because actually it was like trying to take a shot through keith's legs or over keith's shoulders or, <laughs> it was just quite tricky but we've He's got done it again hasn't he yeah, yeah. Uh, so. It's uh, <laughs> it wasn't. This is all very colourful. It's bringing bringing pictures to mind of of a positive sort of uh, forceful production of of spit and of sawdust and of invention and innovation and dogged determination and all of that and sound like me at all. pints of mild maybe <laughs> I I don't know. But it's time it's time we took a break. Just a couple of minutes, everybody. No, I, need, I need I need I need a whiskey after that. <laughs> yeah, I'm on chamomile. I'm on chamomile well, tea after last night. Oh, it is your chance because you've got a couple of minutes while I remind them about all the other fantastic shows and conversations across the fandom podcast network covering lots of your other favourite franchises and genres on all those other wonderful podcasts. So here's our Kevin with a few words about the what's and the where's of all of that. And you can meet us back here for more talk about this really special production with Neil, Keith, Simon and myself. Thank you for listening. We hope you're enjoying this podcast. We'd like to continue to feed your ears by inviting you to listen to these other great shows on the Fandom Podcast Network. It starts with our flagship show, Culture Clash, discussing the latest in entertainment pop culture. Blight of Kings, Immortals Take Notice, our show covering the entire Highlander universe. Couch Potato Theaters, where we celebrate our favorite movies. Time Warp, the Fandom Flashback Podcast, discussing a year in movies and our favorite retro movie, and TV pop culture topics. Good evening, discussing all things Alfred Hitchcock. Union Federation, our Star Trek and Orville show. Hair Metal, the 80s and early 90s rock metal podcast. Type 40, our show covering the time-traveling Doctor Who universe with host Dan Hadley. Lethal Mullet, an 80s and 90s action film podcast with host Adam P. O'Brien. Also check out the Lethal Mullet Network for more great podcasts. What a Piece of Junk, a Star Wars podcast with hosts Scott, Derek, and Nathan. Making Treks, a Star Trek podcast, a deep dive into the final frontier with hosts Mark Newbold and Adam P. O'Brien. And check out our newest shows, The Fandom Show, our monthly fandom podcast network live YouTube exclusive show about the month's hottest topics in fandom, 
and the FPN True Believers MCU podcast discussing the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the related Marvel television and streaming MCU universe, including the connections to the original Marvel comics. You can find the Fandom Podcast Network on several platforms. Please subscribe to the Fandom Podcast Network YouTube channel to receive notifications of new podcast episodes and live events. You can enjoy all of the Fandom Podcast Network audio podcasts on our master feed at fpnet.podbean.com. The Fandom Podcast Network is on all major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcasts and iTunes. You can find the Fandom Podcast Network on Facebook. You can email us at fandompodcastnetwork at gmail.com. You can also find the Fandom Podcast Network on Instagram at Fandom Podcast Network and on Twitter at FanPod Network. Thank you for listening, and remember, respect others and enjoy your fandom. Yes, we've teased and tantalized you there, and we can even clothe you too. There's merch to match all of those shows, including Type 40. If you head over to tpublic.com, you can search for the Fandom Podcast Network and you'll find a whole store full of all the team colors for all of the podcasts on everything from T-shirts to phone cases and tapestries. Seeing is believing, I can promise you. Treat yourself, treat your other selves, and it all goes to support the Fandom Podcast Network into the bargain. So... Everybody wins. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> you We're back. Jammy, yeah. jammy, jammy person. I, I was <laughs> going to have a Guinness tonight, as I always do. Yeah, and I oh, oh, placement, one of my favourite beers. But there we go. Oh. If they send me a here. crate, I'll give you some. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with Keith Barfather, Neil Cole, Simon Horton, and myself for more talk about Lockdown, a real-time pictures production. Keith, uh, you've got a list of credits to your name, seriously, uh, that stretches into the hundreds, haven't you? You've uh, working for the BBC or Channel 4, as you described, and in the world of uh, corporate and, and training films, you name it, you've kind of done it. You must have thought that you'd seen it all. But in the processes of putting this lockdown DVD together, what's the strangest thing that you were sent, without giving us too many spoilers? Um, I, I won't say... I won't say what the strangest thing, because frankly, I find anything that we ever do strange. I mean, I'm, I'm change, changing it slightly, and I'll come back to your question. Yes. I was um, filming. I, I am most blessed in life. I am. I am one of the luckiest human beings in the world. I've got a fantastic wife, marvelous son, great friends, um, and I do a job that isn't a job. It's a vocation. What else can you ask for in life? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and, um, and my wife, Anastasia, is uh, Greek, Cypriot. And we do a lot of filming out there for uh, Greek language programming. And she's won awards. She's also a writer and director. And she's won awards for the work that she's done. And uh, we were doing a documentary about the, there used to be a railway in Cyprus. Uh, British built it in the 1900s. Um, and we were filming um, a piece of um, the railway, a, a carriage that was being taken from uh, Nicosia, the capital's the new museum that's been built at Evriku. And if there's any railway fans out there, there's, it's a great museum to visit in Cyprus. But um, to film it, I was standing on the back of a 4 by 4 truck, zooming along at about 60 clicks um, with the camera because we didn't have the money for, funnily enough, a proper kit. Um, and it was pre-drones because we could have probably used a drone. Um, and the wind was blowing at me and we were going past it on the motorway with a police escort. So I could over, we could overtake and film it as I was going past it like this. And I just suddenly burst out laughing. I just thought, this is madness. And it's fantastic. And I'm doing it. And I was howling with laughter and then Stacey leaned out the window and said, are you all right? And I went, yes. <laughs> and that for me with fandom, because I am a fan and I always will be. Um, is what I love the most is those moments. I mean, Neil and I shared some hysterical moments over those two days. Um, you know, and Sophie, you know, we, we're, we became a tight-knit group, as you do. Um, and, but out of, the, out of all the material that was sent, I can't tell you specifically what I'm talking about because I don't want to spoil it. Of course. Um, but the end theme music, the music that's played at the end of the production, um is played by a doctor who fan um on a piece of um a guitar that he made himself 
And I will say no more than that. But I actually think it encapsulates the spirit of Doctor Who fandom. And it certainly encapsulates the spirit of the human race. And I know that sounds pompous. No, not at all. Uh, you wait, you wait until you see it. Um, you know, the whole thing, uh, I think, is incredibly uplifting. I mean, Roger decided to put it together with a slight tongue in cheek attitude, not taking the piss. Uh, I, I he course. and I were both adamant that that was not the point, but he did want it to be humorous because you don't want to cover a subject like lockdown by being somber and depressing. You know, however that much there was a lot of that in what we all went through, you want to look at the bright side of it. You want to say what people did to entertain themselves. So the whole style of what he's done is humorous, um, but he does get the balance, I think, incredibly right. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Well, well, I was going to say, were you able to use everything that came in or was the stuff that, 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 that didn't make the cut? Well, I, I asked Rog if he could make sure that everybody was in it. I mean, it's very difficult to do that, obviously. Um, I'm sure that there may be some people who sent stuff in who'd be a bit disappointed about how much was used. Um, and it may be that they might only be in for a couple of frames with a piece taken just in a collage. Um I we I can say on behalf of Roger and myself is we valued every contribution that was made. The only way we could judge it to use it was obviously from the point of view of making it entertaining. You've got to entertain your audience. So you you have to you have to cherry pick what does that, either by editing it to make it more enjoyable or by massaging the way it goes together. And I think Roger's done a wonderful job of it. I mean to date, we, we, although this hasn't been released into the market yet, what I could do is put it out to the film festivals that we were so successful with SIL um, at the science fiction film festivals this time, not the general science fiction festivals. And we've won four awards already and 100% selection rate. Well, I was going to ask about that because, yeah, I couldn't understand yeah. how, how a film that hasn't yet been, been released could win all these awards. I've got a list of them here. You've got... You've got, uh, yeah, uh, prior to the to the DVDs download and stream launch next month on the 9th of August, Real Time Pictures' latest documentary production has already run three awards, it says here, so it yeah. sounds like it's still counting, at prestigious UK film festivals, Best Documentary at uh, LA Sci-Fi Film Festival, Best Documentary at the Hollywood Blood Horror Festival, Best Docu Feature at Red Dragon Creative Awards. Yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. and it describes it as an utterly unique production made for fans, by fans, and about fans, hosted yeah. by Sophie Aldred and directed by Roger Christopher. Stone. I don't know who wrote that, but they're a genius, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> what a way with words, Keith. What a way with words. <laughs> Bullshit. And, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> and all this happened, happened, came to life on your on your territory, Neil. You must be quite proud to be associated with this as well. I'm speechless. It, 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 this year has been amazing because I've got um, when the real. I said to Keith, I don't know if you remember. I did set. Look, I've had Netflix here. And that's okay. That's that's okay. Getting you guys here was was because this is this. You're in my. You you're someone I admired and watched through a long period of my life. And so to suddenly be a little part of that and take part in something was absolutely fantastic. I mean, I remember um, really liking Return to Devil's End and and. Um, you know, certain releases you've done over there. I enjoyed the, the dramas as well. And um, just to think I'm part of it, and, and I guess as well, because the village we've, um, we're trying, you know, we're trying to get people in, it, it, it's so damn good to be part of a production because for the, the community, it really, the museum does help the community. We get people in who would never come to this place. It's usually, you know, walkers <laughs> who come here, to be honest, and, and historians who like, uh, you know, tuberculosis and lead mining. You know, so we're trying to broaden broaden the audience. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And um, so to be part of something like this, it's just it's it's not just helping my little museum, and I'm so chuffed to be part of it. But it's just helping our community. It's fantastic. I mean, I, and, I know you know. And Neil, what 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 did what did Sophie make of the uh, well of of the of the of Allendale itself and of the museum specifically? What was what was Sophie's take on it? Well, I guess you'd you'd have to. But Keith might have got more from her from that. She certainly. I mean, I, I I was taxi for the the two days, so I did get quite a bit of time chatting to her. Um, she's. I think she certainly seemed to like it. I mean, she. Um, 
she i think i mean we had a lovely evening um it, it is a warm village i say this i've lived in a few places and this is this little village here i i've taken to and it's very accepting of an eccentric like me and there's i mean there is like it's a weird I mean, it's a, for such a small place we are facing a little art gallery art center which is full of artist studios called the forge and to have that in the middle of a little you know village like that it shows you the sort of place it is that it will accept yeah. jewelry makers it will accept leather craft makers it will accept a doctor who museum it will accept and so they're almost getting used to filming in a sense because everyone was really good wasn't they keith there was nobody really sort of sort of trying to stick their head in. and the people i can see you watching yeah, the, pers people, the person who's in the background going yeah the people <laughs> just went and afterwards went filming again neil and i went yeah yeah you know what, what's it this time and it was just like and it was it, it's just a lovely place and it really i can't say enough Keith, it, it helps this little community by getting the word out and then and then the timing with being a doctor who mag for the museum is just bloody great i mean you couldn't yeah. time that better and i would so, certainly uh, say to everybody out there who's watching this they may be bored sugarless by listening to me talk about what i do but if you if you can get in a car and oh we can go by train as well but if you can get in the car mm -hmm. Go on a little holiday and stop off at Allendale for a night. Stay at one of the pubs. Um, yeah. The village is gorgeous. Spend a couple of days yeah. there. Go to the museum. Yeah. Bring a bit of money to the economy of the village. Do it. Yeah. You won't regret yeah, it. it. It's a nice place. I'm trying to sell the place very much. It is. Very it, well, it, is very well. <laughs> it is classed as a world heritage site. I hadn't realised, but we are classed as that because it's quite. A, a, the environment is quite. It's protected. after I went, mate. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, so i'm just i'm trying to, it is a nice relaxing place to come it's it's it's, you know? it's a beautiful it's a beautiful village and it's a beautiful part of the world i remember when i came up to you a couple of years ago and i stopped in newcastle yeah. and then had the drive out through hexham yeah. hexham abbey is beautiful um the yeah. countryside is just magnificent and you really it's quite unspoiled it's it's yeah it's very really unspoiled. Unspoiled. and it's and it's not busy like the lakes are literally yeah. half an hour that way and they are the roads are right. chocolate and we've got the roman wall 25 minutes or so that way uh, which isn't as bad as that but it, here it's just this little it's just not it's quite you know it's really peaceful and the, it's everything's in the marketplace and you can just it's I, find, I mean as a human being living here i just find it a very relaxing calming environment to function within which i appreciate now you know and um yeah i'll show them about allendale <laughs> <laughs> calm <laughs> around <laughs> neil cole yeah, <laughs> whilst, we've, whilst we've got you, Neil, let's uh, a quick progress yeah. report since we last spoke. Because, yes, you have taken possession of the actual Broton, haven't you, from Mike Tucker, as you yes. mentioned earlier on. That must have been quite a I've got, some, I've got something else I've, I've kept for tonight, oh. which Simon knows about. And I, I was going to show you all exclusive. This is, this is an exclusive from Neil Cole and the exclusive. Museum of Classic Science yeah. right now on Type 40. Are you ready? Do you want to see it now? Do you want to see it at the end of the show? Do you want to see it now? Yeah, well, to build it up a little bit, and I'm not going to spoil okay. the surprise, but but Neil Neil called me last week. Uh, well, he sent me photos first, and the emails that yeah. went back from me were like, what the... You cannot yeah. have that. Yeah. You cannot <laughs> have that. <laughs> it's, the sort of, it's the sort of item that the, the well-known dealers get and charge sums of money that are for mortgages for. And somebody, I think following, the, following the Doctor Who magazine article, it basically said, I have something... I don't want it to just go in someone's room, never to be seen again. I've had it for 45 years and it needs to go in your museum. Okay. I think and we should I do it now. Yeah. 45 years. years. Yeah. Yes. Work, work the oh. maths out, see if you can work oh. out what it might be. Oh. You won't okay. guess. You'll never guess what it is. It's my company and I, corporation, isn't it? <laughs> I, I, I had never yes. think I would own something like this in here. I mean, I have got some lovely pieces, but... When you get into 70s stuff, it gets very, okay. very competitive and silly. You ready? So I better have you. We'll get Neil big on the screen here for people who are watching over on bye YouTube. Bye. Let's. Uh... You ready? Please okay. reveal. Exclusive. I'm here braced. We go. Oh. My word. <laughs> that is spectacular. <laughs> And it's got the gold from the last episode. And the little boy, who got it as a little boy, decided to cut the braid off the front of the mask and staple it onto the back. And now as a sort of 50-something adult, he said, I'm really sorry. Um, wow. And it's, it's, made of, it's made of fiberglass. And I've got a little bit of building, a little bit of just, just solidifying to do, because the, the node, the sort of front, there's a crack and it's been sellotaped, where it obviously got a kick, you know. And the band is just coming off there at the top, but I'm going to very care, not do very much to this at all. It will just be 
but it's and, it's a so for the and for anybody and, for the and for out anybody there listening. Who, it's the ambassadors of death, isn't it? <laughs> so it's for the, the people what? out there who can't do, <laughs> for the people out there who are listening to the podcast, Neil, could you describe exactly what it is, where it's yeah. from, and when it was on screen? Okay, what this is, is the, one of the servicer robot mummy heads from of three that were made for um, Pyramids of Mars, which is, is a lot of people's, it's certainly in my top three. Um, I adore yeah. the story. And it's one of, it's sort of quintessential Doctor Who. If, frankly, if any of the showrunners coming on board, just just bloody well watch Pyramids of Mars, will you? Just 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 it's take it in and yeah. breathe breathe the fumes and just get a feel for it. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. And um and anyway, and that is one of the heads, and it's 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 got the bandage on that was applied in episode four for the not quite as effective Mars scenes, but you know, and and it's it's an actually remarkably good nick. And I am not aware there probably will be another one somewhere, but I I am not aware of it. Well. It's, it's, uh, I'm yeah. not saying that there is another one out there. This is why when you sent the photos to me a week or so ago, I was literally, yeah. my jaw hit the floor because I genuinely yeah. thought that there was no way that that would still exist. I, well, I'll, never... tell you, I'll, I'll tell you, that, well, the key thing is it's fiberglass inside. That's the saving grace with any of these things. There's a bit of foam rubber, which is clearly dusting away. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'll resin a bit of that. I'll just protect that and, and moisturise it. But at the end of the day, what it was, the guy who got it, the story is simple as this. You, you could, it's brilliant. It's typical BBC of the 70s. His dad was the milkman at TV Centre right. and they were just chucking out props like they did. And, it, and he just went up to the, the milkman and said, uh, you've got a son, haven't you? Yeah. He's like, Doctor Who? Yeah. Oh, God. Back like that. There you go. And that's it. And he's kept it ever since. Really? And the key thing was, the key thing is, I mean, I'm on a promise here. I'll be putting this out this month, you know, in August, sorry. I'll be putting it out. It's got to go on display. It's not to sit in a room again it needs to be because of your reaction simon you know and we should and it's even better in the flesh you know when you see it it's like that's the bloody mask so it's going on display asa incredible um so that i'm, I'm just i was yeah over the moon that so there you go he, he didn't have to throw out any two inch video tapes at the same <laughs> time <did he? laughs> this is the kind Amazing. of thing fiberglass and, and bandages and tape and all the rest of it that it yeah. just makes you all misty eye doesn't it simon's wiping away a tear now i, I, I spoke I, I spoke to um stephen mansfield you know about this because we did a, a podcast with stephen mansfield and i at some point for another showy thing and um i said another Steve, show? is it another another oh, show another, yes. is there another one <laughs> no no it was a dream no but what i uh, he i said steve what do you reckon as somebody who worked and did amazing work because i think steve mansell's work was bloody incredible on the show what did you reckon why are the 70s doctor who, you know an earlier doctor who costume and monsters so good and he said in a nutshell it's the theatricality it, they were coming from a theater background so whereas everything now is sculpted cast and pristine it's a bit like Stratford John slipper. I wish I had it. It's just in the car outside to show you. It's <laughs> it's literally bandage. It's a, it's a slipper. They've just it's not been cast, sculpted precisely. It's a bit like this. That I suspect that would have been now cast in fiberglass probably and sculpted finely. And it's the fact it's not. There's just something tangible about it, which yeah, yeah. it's like the original Sontaran costumes. You know the quilted. I love them. The quilted costumes and the bit of metal around. And there's a bit of sculpt. Obviously, this, but it, it's not this whole sculpt. I mean. Obviously, the sculpting's amazing now, amazing quality, but there's just something about that theatre skills. They were using theater, theatrical costuming styles. Anyway, yeah. that's me. I'll shut up again. The, the future seems brighter and brighter for, for yourself and the Museum of Classic Sci-Fi, Neil. The, the more the word gets out about you, your museum, what you do and how you do it, people just seem to respond to it like this and to reach, and to reach out to you. But I, the thing is, I did say on Radio Radio uh, Six the other day, I said, you know, it's it's not rock and roll here. You know, it is a pretty sedate life. I mean, I've actually had a week of pretty busy days, but the, once the holiday's gone, it's very quiet, and it's not. It's it, that's why I'm doing the magazines I'm doing and things because I've got, you know, you've got. To, it, I think it's it's not a rock and roll lifestyle. It's a quiet. It's a chance to draw, a chance to write, and it's a chance to do all those things, and then the, share the have the pleasure of letting people have access to the stuff you know but i mean? think but i think what's nice is that neil you you are very much sort of shining the light on you you're, you're carrying the flame forward now for for sort of museums for doctor who 
you are that beacon. And in many ways, Keith, throughout the sort of 80s, I mean, certainly going back to what Neil was saying earlier on, you know, I remember your stuff throughout the 80s. And, and in that respect, you were the beacon at that point because you were the only one supplying this kind of stuff, which was absolute nirvana to fans like like me and Neil. And that's why, really, you, were the, you, you guys were the perfect match here for this particular yeah. project. For, Pioneers. For you to film this within Neil's museum. It just feels... The correct match because you both kind of you, you know you, you both trailblazers in your own way in that respect wartime that we're looking at screen and now i remember you know god that was one of the most exciting things as a fan to come out because it was the first thing really that came out from outside of the of the of the sphere of the show itself wasn't it it was yeah. the first spin-off in that respect yeah i mean i i, I think you know, you don't think about it at the time. I mean, with Myth Makers, we never thought that uh, when I started it, I never thought legacy. You know, I thought um, I know what I thought. I thought uh, I'm running an independent production company now and I want to own some of the product that I make because most independent production companies will work for a uh, client or even for network television and they'll take all the rights away from you and give you a slight percentage if you're lucky of the money yeah. that's available um but what i wanted to do is build a portfolio for real time that we owned that we, in time would allow us to you know to develop a sort of a, a, a platform that we would be able to work from um and people like kevin uh, and nick briggs uh, they were all people who who helped me do that you know stephen payne who sadly passed away last week was another person who was involved in the early days um, of what we were doing. Um, and I think only in time do you start to realize that you're actually doing something that has incredibly important legacy values. I mean, you know, myth makers, we've now made, I can't quite believe it myself, we've made about 155 myth makers. Um, and the legacy is the doctors, you know, is to be able to put the doctors out you know, with each of the doctors and, and the main cast members originally that were involved. Ah, and now the, the behind the scenes, which we're doing. Um, and it's and pretty fantastic. I mean, these are just, the, 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 if anybody hasn't sort of dipped into these as yet, I can't recommend them highly enough. There's literally hours of, of footage on here, you know, two discs in each one. Um, you, you couldn't ask for anything more and they're great value. Um, so highly recommend these. Go and go and grab them, and 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 interviews with people. Tragically, you know, I mean, again, not that I. I'll tell you when it first sunk in, and and I started to get a bit serious about not serious about what I do, but but aware of the fact that what I was doing was important, if I may say, was when Ian Marta died. Um, yeah. We had literally just shot his Myth Makers. Um, a wonderful man, an absolutely treasure of a human being um and we had a wonderful time filming it down on the locations for terror of the zygons he'd sent me all his photographs um and i had literally just got back all the signed stickers for the vhs tapes and i got the phone call and i was just i lit i was just looking at the labels thinking he's just signed these and we've lost yeah. it and, and and the interview is on here and let's yeah. let's not forget yeah. it, it's the only it's the only envision interview within Marta that exists it's priceless but i think there's a couple of short ones but in in all essence yes yes correct yeah yeah As and then we interviews with people like you know there's no interview that i'm aware of with john pertwee talking about his entire career yeah um mary tam you know, the, there are interviews with them, but there's nothing where they talk about their life. Um, and nothing as mad as the Mary Tam interview either. It's probably the, one of the maddest things. I love ever. that one. And if and you don't know why, go to it. David Howe. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Stuff. I mean, one of my favourites is be because, one, it's Lou, is Louise Jameson Smith, maybe. Yeah. But also the, the fact that we could shoot it where we shot it and get that lovely feeling of Victorian England. And it's interesting because I only saw that one recently on on the um, on the Tom DVD. Yeah, and I filmed I filmed there myself. It's a it's a museum. Of really? Movie. And I filmed myself there yeah. many years ago. And I didn't know that you'd shot the Louise Jameson interview there. It just of course started, and I'm like, 
I filmed it. I, I filmed there myself. It's by Kirk Still Isn't by Kirk Still Abbey. Yeah, Kirk yeah. Still Abbey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's a cracking museum. And it was great for me to just suddenly recognise. And it's a you're right, it's a brilliant interview with her. It's it's a mm. cracking interview. They're all good. They're they're all worth their weight in gold, those interviews that you've done. And as you say, some people are no longer with us, so they get more priceless by the day. Yeah. And there'll be links in the uh, the show notes to the podcast, the description to the video version too. So you won't be in any doubt about where to go to get your fill, all these releases that we're talking about, the past and and the present of real time pictures, everything that Keith's done throughout his career is uh, is there, isn't it, in various formats. Now you've you've joined the streaming age too, haven't you, Keith? Yeah. Yeah, both download and stream through Time Travel TV. If I can add one little postscript um, yeah. to this. Um, we, as I think Neil knows and remembers, we were going to shoot on Saturday. Sunday morning, I was going to get in the car and drive down to see Damaris Heyman. Yes. Um, and I was going to take her trophy for White Witch of Devil's End. Uh, yeah. And we had to move the filming across to Sunday morning to finish everything for lockdown. We had no choice. Um, and I was in the car driving back at like four o'clock in the afternoon, all the way up from down Allendale down to London. And there was just no way I was going to make it to Damaris's home. So I missed seeing her and she died that week. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, it's life. <laughs> There's nothing you can do about it. And I know that Damaris would be the first person to have understood that, but it still, it still hurts. It's a bit sweet postscript. So. When when I first heard, I, I never met Miss Heyman, but when I heard that she passed, uh, you were, you know, I thought of her work with Doctor Who, and I thought of your working and friendship with her immediately because you've always spoken about her with so much affection and respect. You know, sincerely, I'm really sorry uh, for your loss. And we had Ian Kubiak on the show shortly afterwards, and he talked. At, at, some length we put out a tribute video as as well uh, mm. it's not much we know but it's we just had to sort of give something back put something out there for her contribution and uh, yeah there's the uh, all the the uh spin-off video that you made with her it's that's also won several awards hasn't it keith yeah the, the lovely thing once we'd done sill um i, I mean i <laughs> I know a lot of people watching this won't believe me when I say this, but I've never really felt that we'd done anything that would warrant submitting to a film festival until we did Sill. Um, when, I, when I'd done Sill, when, when we edited it, put it together and dubbed it, I thought, I'm never happy. And, I, and the day that I'm happy with anything I do is the day I should retire. But I'm never happy with anything I do. But I thought Sill is good. Sill, I mean, it's Philip Martin's writing who we've lost. And it's Nabil Shaban's incredible performance as Sil. Yeah, That's awesome. what won the awards. My, me, I was just the facilitator. You know, somebody said in an interview not that long ago to, to me, a director should be considered as a facilitator. That's what they should rename a director. A director is there to let everybody else shine. It's not about the director. Um, and that script and Nabil's acting is what made that work uh and we we i mean we're we're gonna hit 100 awards on that in the next few months which is congratulations oh, it's actually um, ludicrous isn't it it's <laughs> yeah it's, we had we had phil newman on the show too we've we've had them all on keith we had phil newman on the show and he talked about we were talking mostly about the long lead exhibition but we talked a little bit before because he's you've known phil for years too haven't you simon yeah yeah, yeah we a bit before and, separated and then came back yeah. together you know yeah yeah, yeah he's lo yeah, lovely, no, he's lovely guy brilliant. Brilliant. And he's an uh, it's incredibly a, talented man. And he's and, he, and he's a lovely bloke. I mean, yeah, I remember hanging around with Phil at, at conventions in the mid eighties. Um you, you know, he's he's just one of those faces that you saw you always saw at conventions. And it's great. And he's still out always there. behind you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, that release is a testimony to you, to yourself, Keith, to Phil, and of course to Nabil. Uh, yeah. it, Thank you. A great watch. Tremendously entertaining and engaging. Nabil, yeah. you're next. You're the only one who hasn't been on yet, my friend. Oh, well, sure, we can arrange that. Just today. make sure he has a decent internet connection because when he's in <laughs> when he's in Ireland, you just forget it. Um, 
Well, the reason I mentioned it, apart from getting loads of compliments from you, of course, was because we would put Sil yeah. out there and people had, had, and I really was utterly amazed it did as well as it did, that they just kept coming in. Um, I, I oversubscribed to film festivals to a degree because I really didn't expect we would do so well. But on the back of that, I reevaluated um, um, White Witch and I really thought that I wanted to do something for Damaris. I, I, I knew that she would treasure anything if we did get an award. And, and I found a couple of awards where they were giving the award as monologues. And I thought, if there's one thing that's good in, in, in White Witch more than anything else is the fact it's Damaris doing a monologue incredibly well. Forget the directing, which is pretty shit at times. She's, she is a knockout. She is utterly amazing. Could listen it? to her forever here. Yeah. Oh, I know. So that's what I put them in. And we won. And and to be able to tell Damaris she had won her first award at a film festival at the age of 90, 98, 90, 91, I think. I'm not absolutely yeah. sure. 99. She just said, she just said that was one thing I really wasn't expecting, you know, oh, which was lovely. And I was, and I was going to give her that award that week. That's, oh, that's what upsets me. I, I sure know she will understand, but yeah. it, it yeah, just. Aware. And I'm sure she's very proud of everything that you've done in, in her, in her name since. Uh, Keith, no sooner had you published the release date for lockdown, I noticed the wheels start to turn again on future productions for you <laughs> you never, never seem stop. you never <laughs> seem to stop now and as we recover and, and get back to sort of a, something approaching normal day day-to-day -day life i was wondering what are your hopes for the short-term future and do you have a any messages to send back to the people who've supported this project in particular out there who may be watching or listening um well i, I mean plans we I'm hoping if we can keep enough sales going uh, to get all of our uh, history uh, in the doctors, um, all of the production staff for every doctor out so that there's a massive 26 volume collection of the entire history of Doctor Who. You know, it's like a part work of Doctor Who for me. Yeah. So I'm praying that we can, if anybody out there who's never, never seen a doctors, please get one. Have a look, and I hope you'll think they're worth buying and get the set. You know, I, I, it isn't for me. It, it is for me, but it, it, it's it's about building that collection. If I can't clear enough sales right through, I won't be able to release them all. And I'm just hoping we can do that. I love I that description, know. Simon, of a part work. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. because it, it's it's that definitive thing, isn't it? And because you have interviewed oh. just about everybody and anybody that is it, that is connected with it mm. and as soon as you mentioned these a few weeks ago that the these the, these new um behind the scenes doctors dvds everybody was because you put a question out didn't you would anybody in, be interested yeah. or not and everybody was like well of course we'd be interested it was a sudden feeding frenzy um yeah. so there's still a huge appetite out there for the stuff that you've done well we're now we're now really just into us the fans where you know there, there was when when kosh were releasing them and and doing a fantastic job and i'm so grateful to them they were reaching a wider always a slightly wider audience but now it's just us yeah <laughs> it, you know we're selling just to the the hardcore doctor who fans uh for the next you know couple of years to try and get the whole lot out and if we can I honestly believe that it's worth it to have that 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 selection. You know, I for agree. people like Verity Lambert, you know, an interview with Verity Lambert. There aren't yeah. many of those around. Yeah. Um, you know, so, you know, if you're out there, guys, please, you know, not for me, for all of us, get the set. You, I think it's worth every penny. Um, apart from that, um, we are going to do, and Neil knows about this, and I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to it working with Neil again we're going to do um, a series of documentaries called Doctor on Display which would be the history of all of the exhibitions um, so Blackpool, Blackpool 1, Blackpool 2, Longleat, um, Daypole, Flangothlan um, and Neil Cole 
Um, and maybe, maybe if they do well <laughs> enough, we'll tag on, uh, maybe doing you the big tour of America and all that kind of thing. We'll, we'll oh, see. I'll tell you what, just while you're saying that, I have Andrew Skeletta's, Skeletta's original artwork for the whole trailer. I have his original paintings for them all. You heard it here first, guys. So you need them, you know. How big are they, Neil? How big are the originals? About the size of two houses. No, the, the, <laughs> the, original, I've got the original the original, artwork. I, I've got, I, do you know, I use them in a lesson at school on design, on design development to show kids that you don't just get your first idea finished. Because most, you know, it's like with kids, it's like, finished! And it's, no, it's not. That's your first job. <laughs> but I've got, I've, Andrew very kindly sold them to me a few years ago. And it goes from his literary biro sketch it then goes to the side, you know, with the, the, the vortex and all the, the, the Tower Russell on it. It's his pencil sketch, then his, it, 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 his next pencil sketch, and then it goes to his first acrylics, and I've finally got the finished submitted artwork to the BBC. And wow. that's the one. And then he got his team of artists, uh, you know, auto spray artists, and he, to be honest, he was not happy with what they did. He was not happy with the translation. Uh, and having got the original now, you see it. But the reality is, that he was that that was him. He was at the top of his game when he did that bit of work. And when you see it, yeah, translate. I wouldn't have envied the task of translating that that onto a truck. Personally. You're on, mate. <laughs> you know. You're on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and yeah, Neil that, will yeah, try but, most things. You will try. You most heard things it here first. first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that that's sort of like the next the next sort of uh, things to do. And I've got three dramas. Um, either written or um um in in prep i mean we we've we've got seal two philip wrote it before he passed which is wonderful not that he passed that we've got it that he actually finished it um anomaly another drama which is the what happened to kate and to gordy her son um and and um cavendish as well uh and i've got the rights to do a sequel to stones of blood Woo! Um, and that will be, you know, that's, I'm not thinking beyond that. Um, we're going to call it Blood of the Stones. Hey. Um, and it's going to be a horror movie. Not his first barbecue. That's Whoa. ideal for you, isn't it? That's ideal territory for God, you. God, you've definitely got my attention now. Yeah, we're, we're, and, and I'm going, and I am going for it on that one. It is going to be a horror movie. Wow, are you not going to have you're not going to have a shagging zygon in like that? Well, there was an independent one, didn't there? there, was, ah, that there was a, that's, a, that's a different kind of horror. <laughs> yeah, that was Bill, wasn't it? I'm yeah. burned in I'm burned in my brain that the shagging zygon one. Yeah. And I remember put it. You know, you put something on and you're not expecting it at all. You just put it on. And it's like what? I, just, I yeah. hope that I met the auntie. The auntie was in the room when I had it. Oh, you know, I was like, oh, I'm just putting this. In. And it's like it's like. <laughs> Yeah. Neil, Sorry. I hope that the Zygon that you've got staying with you doesn't try any of that lock. He's behind glass. He's behind glass. Bro, mate. I'm going glass. now. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. How, how on earth do we follow that, everybody? How on earth do we follow that? Maybe by telling you that, yeah, Lockdown, the Doctor Who fans' survival guide is released on the 9th of August 2021. Priced £11.50, including postage and packing. There's a limited edition glass mastered DVD. It's a limited number of a thousand of those. Once they're gone, they're gone forever, says the blurb here from, from uh, Keith's from me. fair hand. <laughs> It'll only be available as a DVD-R after that, so pre-order now from www.timetraveltv.com. I'm very proud of it. Very proud of it. I'm proud of it. everybody who submitted in as well. I'm proud of everybody. Yeah, can I just can I just be clear? What is this glass? Because I'm thick. What's oh sure. Mass? Okay. What is it? When, yes. when you when you buy a, a film, uh, you know, in the high street, Blu-ray or, or DVD, they what they do is they make a a, a glass mastered uh, pressing which they then do all the duplication from so all the duplicate all du duplicate copies are high quality um, and glass mastered from that master um, but that means they need to be produced in a factory and really the minimum number you can produce even remotely economically is a thousand um, they're much more expensive than a DVD R which you can do in your home. You know, most yeah, of us yeah. burn CD or a DVD-R. Technically, the pitch quality is exactly the same, but it is certainly true that a DVD that is glass mastered and come in a bulk duplication package 
the way it is will last a lot longer and will be uh, something that you can keep and be happy will last forever. A DVD minus R, and we do a lot of our programming in that, and I don't bemoan them or say there's anything wrong with them, but they certainly don't have the longevity of a glass master DVD. Right. I want one. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah, I will. I'll get on with it. I'll probably get on with it fast. I think you're probably oh, going to get a comp copy, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, well, yeah, lockdown is lifted again and the doors are open. And that's the old girl. She's starting up and calling time on another trip in our TARDIS. I'll be back with another Type 40 soon. Look out for that wherever you found this. It could have been on the dedicated home feed for Type 40, type40.podbean.com, or on the podcatcher of your choice choice even <laughs> apple podcast spotify stitcher iHeartRadio, google play tune in and podbean lots of other places too we're also on youtube the world's largest streaming platform on the spacebook youtube channel but we're still on the fabulous fandom podcast network's master feed loaded with all those other treats for your ears on the weekly maybe you'd like to have your say yes you can reach out to us at type 40 through our social media presence instagram and twitter at type 40 doctor who or there's an email account you can get an email into us for longer form questions ramble or rattle on at type 40 doctor who at gmail.com and if you're feeling really brave really really brave you can join us for some real time <laughs> extra dimensional chit chat over on facebook in the type 40 facebook group that's full of uh, fans of all ages sharing classic and new doctor who daily we're heading into our sixth year on social media now simon you've also got your group on facebook too remind people what, that, what that's called i have yes i've got my group on facebook yeah the hunatics come and say hello at uh, at facebook at the hunatics <laughs> <laughs> We've all got our toys there, our, our favourite toys there. Keith's got a glass of something. And uh, yeah, Neil, you've got yes. you've got your social media presence too. You're always putting something out, short videos or yeah. in a text form, as well as your magazines. Yeah. But what are the what are the yeah. points of contact for everything that you're doing at the Museum of oh, Classic I, Sci-Fi? I, I hate it when people ask me that. I haven't got a right hand, but I will. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Neil. Oh, and the thereby Neil. lies the rub. <laughs> Oh, God. Hello, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. I'll yeah, read he's doing a podcast. Of, I'll read off the podcast, the podcast and he's not <laughs> ready to promote. I mean, <laughs> I'm slick, man, not sweet. a businessman. I'm not a bit. I, I, I'm not a businessman. I've always said that. It's like you know, I, I'm just, I'm just. You're here. a fan. You're a pair of real time fan. pictures. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> right. You basically, you've got yes. the museum of classic sci Yes. If you go on there, that will give you the link to the Facebook page, the Patreon page. Um, and the YouTube channel as well, because the YouTube channel is sort of just a mix. The, the, the Facebook page is basically a blog. It's like a weekly blog of what's going on. Uh, we've got Patreon now where I do these, these rather, I think, rather nice magazines, um, uh, which take one exhibit and, 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 oh, I'll open it up. I've got a close up. Hang on. So basically, and uh, Mike Tucker uh, gave a picture of this, and and they and I design them and write them and everything. And, I'm and again, a bit like what Keith's doing, it's, it's a part work. And I'm trying to come from a different angle um, on the history of the show than that, that's gone before. So it, it's literally the story of a prop within this, and then within the context of what happened to it in the story, and then what happened to it beyond an exhibition. And, things. and the they story. are brilliant. They are absolutely Neil is sort of downplaying them a bit, but they are fantastic magazines. Go and join and get the, get the magazines. Yeah, well, yeah, I try. You know, you do your best, don't you? And if people <laughs> don't like it, you know, you know, bloody do one. I'm really going to have to have a chat with you, Neil, about marketing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not good enough, patrons. It, it, look, listen, Get everybody, off. if you go to the museum, go. If you don't want to, you don't care. <laughs> no. yeah. yeah, I'm here. If you want to come <laughs> in, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you in. <laughs> over, over to you, Keith. We know that you're a sort of international... Man of mystery. Man I don't of know mystery, where, you're going, yeah. where you're going to be. But on the odd occasion where you are still for longer than five minutes, where can people interact with you and get that inside information on all these upcoming projects that you've got? Well, everybody, if you really are desperate for company, you can always get me on social media. Truth <laughs> um, Father, I am there on social media, real time pictures, time travel TV. 
Um, we have our website, realtimepictures.co.uk. And of course, we also have uh, timetraveltv.com to buy any of our product. Um, and we love you all dearly. And you are important to us. He doesn't give, oh no, he doesn't care about anybody, but, but we care. <laughs> so if it's not good enough, it's not good enough, my Patreon, just get out of it. Oh. <laughs> and before See, flight breaks out. I wonder why northern people are considered to be so dour, right? Yeah. I can <laughs> get it so. Yeah, yeah. And it. you can find me. I'm scattered through all space and time, but mostly on Twitter and Instagram as the space book, where I'm wheezing and groaning and yeah. posting about all things geeky yeah. that's inside and outside of the TARDIS. Whoa, this is this has been fun, everybody. Thank you so so much, and thanks to you for watching and for listening. As always, we always have the time if you have the space here at Type Forty. Take care. Speak soon. Bye bye. This is where I hit this in a really slick way. <laughs> says the guy. Says the guy who wasn't really. Yeah.